Hey, it's Rick. Welcome to the channel. And today we're going to make this stash jar. Now, you could use this for just about anything. You could put your tea into it. You could put all kinds of things, but you know what it's for. So I start by just sketching stuff out. Uh, I don't really have an idea what I'm going to do here. I'm just making it up as I go. I'm trying to come up with an idea as well as how I'm going to seal this lid when I put it on. What kind of a interlocking... Um, parts I can make. So here what I've done is uh, download a leaf off the internet um, and just started modeling over top so I can get the shape right. I've pulled the leaf into ZBrush and I'm going back and forth here between Moto and ZBrush. Um, Moto I find easier for making uh, simple large shapes and then ZBrush of course is better for sculpting. This video is of course greatly sped up. Uh, I spent several hours working on this. When you're prototyping something like this with no clear vision of where you're going to end up, there's a lot of experimentation and you go down a lot of roads that uh, really don't work out and you end up scrapping those ideas. And I didn't bother to include any of that in this video because it would just get way too long. Here I'm just cleaning up the leaf. This is the primary leaf I'm going to use for most of this design. I'm going to paint it onto the actual lid and onto the sides of the jar itself. Now I've started working on the actual jar itself um, and the lid. Now I'm making these in Modo again because I just find this easier. I'll be exporting this into ZBrush anyway. Here's where I really start doing some experimenting in ZBrush. I've got the master leaf model that I've turned into an IMM brush, which is an insert multi-mesh, I think. Uh, and it allows me to paint that model onto another model, in this case being the jar itself. This is a final rotation of where I ended up, including the script I sculpted on the front. That was made as a separate piece and then applied to the model. I tend to work like that in pieces. Uh, here's the lid. This is a time lapse of the 3D printing process. Uh, I pardon the poor quality. I'm recording this with a uh, classic PS3 camera, uh, what I've got hooked up to my Octopi setup. I haven't figured out how to get a, a better webcam attached to it yet. But here you can see what happens. Uh, you get the final. Because of all the parts that stick out, all the detail and stuff, there's a lot of supports on this model. Um, which is just necessary. So it doesn't look like much at this stage and there's quite a bit of cleanup stuff I'm gonna have to break off of this. So this is the beginning of the cleanup process. Again, greatly sped up. But you can see how the stuff comes off pretty easily. I did adjust the settings slightly in my slicing software to make the distances both horizontally and vertically from the support to the actual printed material just a little bit bigger so it was less prone to sticking. And I haven't noticed any problems with the detail uh, that I get with that. But uh, yeah, things break out pretty easy, but there's just a lot of stuff. And you've got to be careful, of course, when you're grabbing plastic to remove that you don't grab the parts that you intend to stay on the model.
All in all, at the highest print quality settings, it takes about 25, 26 hours to do the actual jar, and then about 16 hours to print the lid. So combined total, maybe 40 hours. That's just a flexible artist's palette knife that I'm using to um, sort of scrape the model off the surface there. I printed a few different variations of these in a few different sizes. Some of them were just tests to see how things would work proportionally. This little one here, you can see I actually had some different edging detail on the sides that I decided I just didn't like. Also in the lids, I ended up dishing one out because there was just way too much plastic in the first model. One thing I'd forgotten to mention was the gasket. I decided after I put the lid on uh, that plastic on plastic just wasn't going to keep any of the smell in or keep the lid on. So I got these gaskets on eBay. Uh, I was fortunate enough to find them in the size I needed and then I modeled a groove all the way around the lid so that when you put the lid on, it actually fits pretty snug. It doesn't fall off. Now, if you'd like one of these for your very own, all you need to do is head over to Etsy. Uh, the link is going to be in the description and at the end of this video. Thanks for watching.